Hey, Vlad here, devinsideview.com. Welcome to another video. I just finished recording a video about Corsair, a pure Scala artifact fetcher that became its own package manager. And recently it received a setup command, which allows you to set up your entire Scala related development environment in literally one command. I'm going to be releasing both of these videos at the same time. I just wanna make this one super, super short where I just show you this one tiny command. As I already mentioned, there is a larger video about Corsair, so if you want more details, check this one out. I want to make this one super, super short. In fact, I'm going to record the remainder of the video without my camera so that I can speed up many things for you. Now, for historical reasons, I have been a Windows user, not because I like it, it just kind of happened. And recently I switched to WSL2 and I have a couple of videos uh, to explain what it is and how to how to set up all, all, all of this up. So if I open my terminal and I'm gonna do WSL-L-V, you're gonna see that I have two, um, Ubuntu distributions, one is called Dev Inside You. This is the one that I usually use when I record my videos. And this is the one that I usually use as my workspace to prepare all of my videos. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna install a fresh new instance and we're gonna run CS Setup in there and it's gonna set up everything for us. So I'm gonna close this and I'm gonna open the Windows Store. This is how you uh, how you install WSL instances or distributions the way they're called these days. So I'm just gonna go to Ubuntu 20.04 and the button says launch. It actually should say install because I don't have this thing, but you know. Microsoft. So it's the, it says that installing this will take uh, just a few minutes, but in fact, it should take just a couple of seconds because many things are cached. I'm going to call the user Vlad. I'm going to use the password, password again. And there we go. We already have it, but this is too small. So I'm just going to close this, close this. I'm going to go into my Windows terminal. I'm going to type in the same thing as I did before. And now you're going to see that, that I have a different one over here. So I'm going to do D Ubuntu. 20.04 like this and then bam we're inside i'm going to go into my home folder and because this is a brand new distribution at least you know as a good citizen i'm going to do at least update and i'm going to do apt full full upgrade minus minus y and while it does that i'm actually going to go into my other virtual desktop and i'm going to show you the page that i have open over here this is where you download course here and you download uh it you basically download a native launcher so you don't download the jvm application it's a very tiny uh, 50 mags application you can install it on linux mac and on windows i'm showing it to you on linux the installation process is super super simple you just install it you make it ex make it uh, make it executable and then you just run it in this particular case when i just going to run it we're going to run dot slash cs and then we're going to pass in setup and then it will do the rest for us if you're on a mac you can also use homebrew to install it if you're on windows um it's basically all the same thing right so we're always downloading downloading this stuff in fact what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to i'm actually going to copy just just the url okay so i'm going to go back to my uh, virtual machine and let's see if it actually well I, i'm used to calling them virtual machines it's actually not a virtual machine uh so it, it pretty much finished installing and i'm going to speed it up um for you for you in post-production so that you don't have to to look through all of this stuff and there we go it finished so all i need to do is i need to say curl please follow the redirects i'm going to paste the url that i just copied i'm going to ask it to output it into a file called cs it's a super tiny binary it's around 50 megs so it should take just a couple of seconds to download it because i'm on a very good connection so if i clear my screen and i do ls hyphen hl you're going to see that this is the only thing that is in there i'm going to change mode and i'm going to add the executable flag so now it became executable so all i need to do now is i need to do a cs setup and it will start doing all of the things for me it says hey i didn't find a jvm do should we do we want to install it i'm going to say yes please do so now what it does it, it defaults to uh to the java version 8 which is the you know the industry standard these days even though java whatever 15 is already out okay so it just downloaded it and installed it and it asked me if we if, if i want to update the dot profile because for the for a proper java installation we need a java home so i'm going to say yes so now it says if the local share course here bin directory is on the path and this is going to be the directory where it's going to install uh all its tools and it realized that it's not on the path and it asked me if I actually want to uh, to change my profile again so that it would add it for me. And I said, yes, okay. And so now what is happening is that it is checking if the standard Scala applications are installed and it's gonna figure out that most of them are not installed and it's going to install a specific list of the application. It's going to install Ammonite, which is a Scala REPL. If you're new to Scala, I can I sort of imagine that, you know, you might be somebody who is new to Scala watching this video. You might not know some of these tools. So it installs Ammonite, it installs Corsair itself 
itself because this way you will be able to update things by using course so you can just do cs update and we'll just update all of these tools it, it installed the jvm version of course here it installed the scala REPL. Uh, by the way you probably don't need the jvm version of course here it installed the scala compiler which you're probably also not going to need you're probably going to use a build tool the most popular build tool is sbt and it also installed the scala formatter okay so if you go and look into the profile we're going to see that it added these these couple of lines it exported this uh this directory where everything is installed and it exported java home and one of the last things uh that you know would i actually didn't show you if i scroll up it should it probably told us to somewhere over here it told us to here some shell configurations files were updated it is recommended to close the terminal once the setup command is done and open a new one to change um to make the, to, to take the changes into account okay so i just did that i press ctrl d so we log i logged out now i'm back into windows now i'm back into ubuntu and now we can do something like java version and everything will be just fine okay so cs uh is now on the path so you can do cs uh, i'm sorry you can do cs uh list it will show you everything that is installed you can install other tools like for example for example jitterate and jitterate is a, is a template manager so you can download projects for you and uh you know it can like create projects uh projects for you very 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 fastly i'm actually not gonna uh, uh not gonna play with this vm uh, at all anymore so what i'm actually gonna do is i'm actually gonna press ctrl d and i'm gonna uh say please unregister the Ubuntu uh, 20.04, okay? So now if I list them all, you will see that they're actually all gone. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm gonna exit, I'm gonna go to the store again, and I'm gonna do the same trick again. So I'm gonna go to WSL, I'm gonna go over here, and I'm going to uh, click launch again. It's gonna do the same trick as before, okay? Now, what I wanna show you is that you can actually also pass in some parameters to the setup flag. And in fact, I am maintaining a bunch of install hyphen repositories on GitHub, which uh, contain installation scripts for many tools. So what I'm doing right now is I'm creating a brand new VM okay like this and like this so it's basically exactly the same one and i'm going to launch it the same as before okay so i'm going to do lv now it's back there d ubuntu 20.04 as you can see it's a brand new one there is no java there is no cs you know there's nothing like this okay so in the beginning i'm going to do the same thing sudo apt install uh, sudo apt update and sudo apt full upgrade hyphen why like this okay and in the meantime i'm actually going to show you my install script so if you go to install.devinsidey.com it will actually redirect you to my github uh, profile and it will search for the repositories that, are, that start with install hyphen that's actually too large let's go back to maybe maybe 50. okay so what you can actually do also you can actually search for stuff so you can go to install devinsidey.com slash scala for example and you're going to find uh scala env and if you go to Scala ENV, and the way my scripts work is that you always copy paste these two lines and you just run them and that's all you need to do. The first line always downloads the installation script. The second line makes it executable and actually runs it. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go into the script to show you actually what it what it is doing behind the scenes. The first thing that it does, it, it removes itself. Then it downloads the course you launched the same as we did by hand. It makes it executable. It runs the setup, but this time with a couple of flags. It says, you know, it, it says basically, you know, answer all the questions was yes, prefer the Graal VM over the Adopt Open JDK VM, and please install this specific list of things. After this, remove this tiny launcher because now we installed Corsair uh, through Corsair itself. And also, it, it prints out, don't forget to restart your terminal. And so, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to go back over here. It almost finished. Now it finished, so I'm just going to paste these two lines. I'm going to press enter, and everything from here is going to automatically happen uh, for me. Okay, so my hands are over here, and it's going to ask me, like, once it finishes uh, downloading the Graal VM, I'm going to speed this up, but I really want you to, to kind of like see my hands because I really want you to see that uh, that it answered yes for me. In fact, you actually see it over here. It, it already asked a question if, which, if, it should, if it should install the JVM, and it says it said yes automatically for me. Okay, so I'm not doing anything it just runs completely automatically for me in fact it already finished finished with the jvm now it's gonna um figure out that this directory was not not on the path so it's gonna it's gonna ask me if i want to uh, modify my dot profile and it's gonna answer this yes automatically for me it's gonna go and change the profile for me it's going to download the same apps as before 
And there we go, it finished. It reminds me that we shouldn't forget to restart the terminal. So I'm gonna go back to Windows, go back to Ubuntu, go back to my home folder, and now we can do Java version and it's installed. I can launch Ammonite, which is a REPL, and bam, it works just fine. I can install tools like, for example, Jitterate, and I'm installing Jitterate just so that I can uh, actually show you the full installation, right? So we're actually going to go and we're gonna create a dev folder. We're gonna go into the dev folder. We're gonna do G8 dev inside you, Scala C, dot g8 and um, we actually don't need j8 and by the way recently i also created uh one for scala 3 so there's also scala 3 c scala 3 is going to come out very very soon okay i'm going to call it playground playground i'm going to call it com dev inside you yes this is fine for the package i'm going to go into playground and i'm going to run sbt test now the way you know sbt installation works is that you actually install the launcher and not the sbt itself and the first time you actually launch sbt it looks into your uh properties file and it, it it figures out which version it should download for your specific project recently sbt 1.4.0 came out and so what is happening right now is that is that it is installing sbt 1.4.0 it's going to take quite some time but you don't have to wait because i'm going to cut it out from the video All right, one eternity later, it finished. So I'm actually going to start VS Code in the current directory. Because I'm using WSL, it actually installs like the server side of VS Code inside of, um, inside of Ubuntu. It launches VS Code inside of uh, Windows. Okay, now uh, I usually call my projects Playground, which is why it thought that it actually remembers it. Okay, so all I need to do is I need to go and install the Metals extension. Okay, so I'm going to go and install it inside of WSL. Okay. And once it's installed, it's gonna ask me to reload VS Code. Reload required, and there we go. All right, I'm gonna open the editor again. It's going to realize that this is actually a, a Scala project, so it will ask me to import the build, and we're going to do this. It's downloading metals. There we go, import the build. Show logs. And there we go, it finished. So now if I go over here, I'm gonna save the file. It should start uh, triggering stuff. Sometimes this happened that it says no build target for blah, blah, blah. I believe as of right now, it actually starts starts itself. It starts bloop. So it will take uh, a couple of seconds until it realizes that everything is fine. If you're not patient, you can always just, just reload VS Code. But as you can see, it says connected to build server. Everything is fine now. So I'm going to save the file. It's going to say prepare and presentation compiler. Now it's going to compile everything through bloop. This is a tiny project. It just has a main file and a couple of tests. I just want to show you that everything works fine that everything compiles that you know the run button will appear over here in just a couple of seconds and i click on run and it's going to run it over here hello world it should look like this i'm going to go to example suite and we're going to do test and ta-da our entire um scholar development environment is set up in fact i'm actually going to show you one tiny tiny thing so if i go to build.sbt recently um there was this uh, cool plugin release that can look up uh, dependencies for you. Now, technically, it's not related to, to Corsair, but for example, if I remove this, okay, and uh, I already have this plugin installed. It's called Scaladex um, Search. It's a very, very uh, new plugin. I actually have it installed. I'm not sure why it, why it asked me to install it. It's a very, very new plugin. It has only like 20 downloads. It has only uh, one, you know, one rating, which was actually me that gave it five stars. So I figured that it actually needs, uh, you know, it, it could actually use a bit more love and um uh you know it, it, it's it's too small to make an entire video about it so i figured that i would that i would mention it here so what it allows you to do is that so if you have it installed obviously okay and now i'm in my in my build file it understands that i'm in my build file okay and if i do Control shift p right i open my command palette and i'm looking for scala dex search this code remembers that this is the last thing that i did and says name is scala library for example like cats i'm going to do cats i'm going to press enter and i'm going to give it a couple of seconds to go to the internet and fetch some stuff it says, okay, which one do you want? Well, let's say I want cat's effect. Okay, I'm gonna press enter. Okay, there are a bunch of them. Which ones do you want? Well, let's say cat's effect and cat's effect concurrent. Let's click okay. Okay, which version do you want? Well, I want the 220. Okay, there we go. Dependencies have been copied to the clipboard. So I can go over here and I can just paste them like this. And then bam, they're there. Import the changes. Well, I'm actually not going to let it finish. And yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to show you today. Again, if you want more details about Corsair, then watch this other video. But for now, that's all I have for you today. As always, it's been Vlad, devinsideu.com. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe if you want to improve the developer inside you. If you learned something today, consider supporting me on GitHub sponsors or on Patreon, whatever you prefer. And thus, watch my videos weeks and sometimes even months before everyone else. And most importantly, take care.